Welcome to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast, where insights, attitudes, and methods for success get illuminated. Learn what leaders and change workers have done and are doing now to create magnificent futures. We interview great guests who inspire you to overcome obstacles and achieve your goals. Be sure you visit our website at self-helpcoaching.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, just relax as you listen. You can do something else, but be ready to make an important note. And let's get started. The title of this interview is, Is Fear Holding You Back in Life and Business? In the past year and a half, many businesses have fallen while others have pivoted and thrived. The key is not letting fear take over your mind and heart. My guest is Christina Rivera, and she is an author, speaker, consultant, and internet radio show host of Savvy Business, Life Unscripted. So it, that, that's, it's one title, right? Savvy Business, right. Life Unscripted, mm -hmm. just to be sure. Very good. Christina comes from a background in corporate finance and has more than 25 years of experience in the field of corporate finance and accounts receivable. I need your help, Christine. Let me tell yeah. you. I, uh, boy, <laughs> I was just having this conversation about an hour ago with my partner. <laughs> since, <laughs> since the conception of her show, Savvy Business, in 2012, she has interviewed over 1,000 businesses, foremost experts, and successful individuals of all walks of life. March 2020, she published her first book, Having It Made, a journey of rediscovery and purpose. And with that, ladies and gentlemen and others, I give you Christina Rivera. <laughs> Hi, Tony. Welcome. Thank you so much for uh, having me join you. I'm so excited. Thank you very much. My podcast ma manager, Alicia, uh, scoped you out. She said, you got to have this person on your show. She's She mm -hmm. has what we're about, you know, and mm -hmm. we're all about business. Uh, you know, change work and coaching, but yeah. innovation and media is, and, and digital media is definitely the way of the world now. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. And, uh, you, you know, tell me your experiences with the video. I, it's really making an explosion for businesses. I found not only for my own, what have you found? Well, I created, I created this podcast, mm -hmm. not just de definitely to bring about, you know, talk about my message and to bring on people with their messages like yourself. But I also saw that this is a fantastic marketing tool for mm -hmm. business. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't like to read. I, I mean, I, I do read, but I must, for, <laughs> I must pref prefer to watch, you know? So, you know, even though both have their pros and cons, uh, but videos have a lot of pros for a lot of people and people mm -hmm. like to watch and, and, it's, and, and, it, and it can be a lot more entertaining too. So I mm -hmm. think video is really the way to go, but you can't, go just with that no, you have no. A, a little bit more yeah absolutely so, so let's 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 get right into what you're about mm -hmm. i mean you're about a, a number of things but let's let's stay focused on mm -hmm. on the, on your prime message right now which is about fear yeah uh, and how that's you know i i tell you know i'm i'm a former life coach and i mm -hmm. and i tell people all the time i learned long ago that all fears are masters and what you're afraid <laughs> of is what you're a slave of <laughs> mm. So I'm going to ask you, Christina, why is fear so addicting? Yeah, it's amazing. And, and, and interestingly enough, the reason this book even got written was I was back in 20, 2008. That's it. 2008. I was in a corporate job in a cubicle and I was really miserable. And a friend said to me one day, do you realize that you say I'm scared? I'm anxious. I'm nervous. All of these fear-based words all the time in your speech. And I didn't realize that. And so uh, through that and our conversations together, I started to write a blog, 101 mistakes, uh, uh, 101 mistakes I learned in business. Uh, and uh, I wrote that blog. So it was basically, what did I learn in the corporate world and how did I put it to use through my mistakes? But I found a lot of my mistakes or things that were my struggle all centered around being scared of things. And you're, you know what the thing is, it is addicting because you can sit around the water cooler and talk about how you might get fired. There's plink slips going on, the 
the, you know, the boss doesn't like me. And it, it just like anger, I think some of these negative emotions can really be addicting. So for me, writing it out was kind of just the first step to become aware of what was running my life, as you said, mastering my life without even realizing it. And I like how you came, you, your discovery uh, began, you noticed the words you were using. And that's a very important thing, because a lot of times we, we don't have a good insight and we don't know what's going on with ourselves. We do, we may or may not, but words are very revealing. The words we use are very re revealing. So others yeah. noticed and you noticed it, that you were using you know, fear uh, related words or fear words, scared. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's a very important thing. And I think I found that when we notice words that we use, such as fear or words or things that we don't want, we need to start changing those words so that it can help us change our internal experience. Mm -hmm. So if we, start, if we start saying, I'm afraid to do this, I'm afraid to do that, it's best to start using different words so that we can mm -hmm. not be fearful, so we can get away from fear or at least start confronting it. Yeah. But I mean, the first thing is even becoming aware of it. Once I became aware of it, then I was like, oh my, I use this all the time. And then while I was talking to people, I would hear myself say, oh, I'm scared to do that. You know, I'll be laughed at if I go right. speak before a crowd. And so that year that I had that conversation, I made a personal decision that it would be the year I conquer, conquer my greatest fears, which at that time were flying. So I took flying lessons. Um, because I, well, I think, oh, wow. Yeah. Not just being a passenger, but being a pilot. Yeah. Because here I am, I would, I love to travel. I would get into commercial airliners. And I, I would practically want to be under the seat. I was so petrified, but I said, I'm going to conquer this. I love traveling. I'm going to get over this fear. So I went and took flying lessons. And the other one was my personal commitment to starting a long-term relationship leading to marriage, which uh, turned out to be starting that year, a relationship with my wonderful now husband. Um, Fantastic. So, uh, so you set yourself some great goals and, and you became a licensed pilot? Uh, no, I didn't. I took 13 lessons, but then from that point on, I just flew with my husband everywhere, now husband, all over the U.S. And kind of doing that got to kick my fear in the bucket. Because Good, right. You, you yeah. overcame it. You overcame yeah, your fear. Exactly. Great. And so now you, now you, so now you fly with confidence and even joy and yeah. you got your husband, your, your wonderful, loving husband. That's my pilot. <laughs> but but let's 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 circle back a bit, Christina. So why is fear so addicting though? What is it about fear that can cause us to have such a proclivity mm -hmm. for it? You know what it is? I, I think it becomes a, a companion you're used to. Have you ever heard of the phrase, uh, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know? And I found this with people in a, many assorted different bad situations in their life. Maybe it's an abusive relationship. Uh, maybe you, you know, you're overweight and you keep saying, I'm going to get on that diet the next week. It, it's, it's more comfortable to stay where you're at, what you know, than trying something out and doing something you don't know. And that, and that was the scariest part for me doing that first step to something I don't know, or something that scares the living, you know, what out of me right. uh, flying. It's like, I know it's not rational for being to be scared. So instead of just think, you know, talking about it, let me just take the first step and do something, not think about it. Just go book that flight, get on that airplane and see what happens. That's fantastic. And it's a very important thing to remember when challenging a fear or, mm -hmm. or to accomplish some goal or to get something is that in order to get something that we haven't had, we've got to do something that we haven't done. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> right we haven't done yet so if you want something new you got to do something new yeah right? otherwise it's going to be the same old stuff yeah and, and tell me people kept saying to me well can you give me the magic formula so i don't get that fear thing like i can just go from a to z and the bottom line i found for myself is no i you had to do it scared i had to go and speak before a crowd scared i had to get in that airplane and take that first flying class scared there was no way around it. there's no easy way around it you just had to go do it right I mean, you, you, I mean, I'm an NLP practitioner and we can help people get into, into more resourceful states uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and the appropriate states. Mm. If you, you know, I'm putting my hands up. I wish I'd met you back then. <laughs> What's that? I wish I'd met you back then. Yeah, I could have moved but, a little quicker. <laughs> but ultimately, you got to do what you just described. You've got to stand up and do it. And the more you do it, the more, well, I mean, almost from the, the, the first instant you become the master, right? Mm -hmm. But the more you do it, the more mass, really the more masterful you become mm -hmm. because you don't, you don't just start conquering the fear. You, that, you do that in the beginning. Yeah. 
you start really mastering the task at hand because it because the fear was the only the first obstacle then you have to actually start getting good at it yeah you know uh, and even if it's, even if it's just being a passenger well being a good passenger i might might mean that you're not afraid from beginning to end whatever whatever your criteria is yeah but the more the more you do anything the better you become at it it's just yeah. that that's like any skill yeah. And one thing I found, uh, Tony, which was interesting, is that no matter what it was, the first time I got out there and spoke or the first time I got in the airplane, is as you continue to grow, as you say, you begin to master that skill, there's different levels of, of new things you learn, which bring on new fear, because now you're stretching yourself. So it's all about that stretching. And when you begin to stretch yourself and pull a little bit past your comfort zone, that's when you start getting that fear. But it's not a bad thing. Actually, it's a great gift because you realize, okay, this is just me not being comfortable. It's new. Let me see if I can go just a teeny bit further so I can stretch myself and grow just a teeny bit more. Uh, fantastic. And you met, you mentioned, you mentioned the key word comfort zone, key term. Uh, all the magic happens in, in the discomfort zone in the comfort zone. Well, we all want to be comfortable. <laughs> no one, no one more than me. <laughs> right. Uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying this interview, but afterwards I'm going to go relax in my cl recliner <laughs> And, you know, it's the evening here in Brooklyn. By the way, I just found out that Christina, though she's in Texas, was living in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. My yeah, old... Bay Ridge, Brooklyn is the house. Yeah, just... I hope anyone listening in from Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, I miss you guys. <laughs> and, and I look forward to that. But all the magic happens when I'm in the discomfort zone. Growth is an is a uncomfortable experience, you know, whether it be facing a fear or so, anything else. All right. Any, any growth. That's a growth. Anything that grows in the it grows is an, is an uncomfortable experience where you're shedding a snake shedding your skin getting too you too big for your old your old body whatever it is whatever yeah. metaphor you want to use and so if you're not feeling discomfort then you're not you're not having growth you might be doing something useful but it's not growth okay mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean we have to stay in the discomfort zone all the time that's ridiculous <laughs> once we, we grow in the discomfort zone then we can go and relax in the comfort zone and let and let the body do its yeah. thing the mind do its thing but we've got to keep going well i'm thinking tony if you're like fearful all the time maybe you've pushed a bit too much because yeah. i've talked to pilots who are even learning and they've first gotten their instrument rating and, and that means you can go up and you just read the instruments you're in the clouds right. and uh there'll be times where if you're feeling attention or, or nervousness at the extreme all the time you might be pushing yourself past your limit yeah. And that's the thing, knowing your limits, where, what do you, where do you want to go? Where are you at now? And let's push a little bit past that to grow, but not too much where you've pissed past your limit at the moment. Right. Mm -hmm. So make yourself reasonable, reasonable goals, you know, yeah. or, or milestones. Don't go nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go nuts, but, but, but stretch yeah. it. Yeah, Very exactly. Good. This is great stuff. Let's take a, a quick moment to hear from our sponsor and we'll be right back with Christina Rivera. This episode of Self-Help Coaching is brought to you by Proficio. Do you like learning by yourself or with others? What if you could do both at the same time? Visit www.proficio.io. That's proficio.io, where you can learn in the environment that suits you as you choose. You are listening to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast with me, your host, Tony Petroza, and we're here with Christina Rivera. We're talking about fear, but we're also talking about her book that came out last year, Having It Made, A Journey of Rediscovery and Purpose. Let's talk about the book for a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what will someone get from the book if they read your book? Well, the main purpose I found, and it was the same when I wrote the blog, it was interesting. I wrote the blog for me. And just like some other people have put up content online and you did it for yourself, other people started to get benefit out of it. And what they realized is that they could relate to me having certain struggles or fears in my life and overcoming them. And I started to get feedback like, oh my gosh, can you please put that out there in a book form? Well, it took me about 11 years to actually go do that. But my hope is that everyone will begin to read my stories and see some of the exercise I put in there that I went through as I was learning and growing and, and put it to use in your own life. See where you might be holding yourself back from expanding and living your fullest potential and where might be your stopping points. Wow. Mm -hmm. So let, let's, let's just ask this, the, the question straight out. What stops people from living their dream life? Yeah. Uh, you know what I think it is? I think often it's looking for the approval of, 
of others. That was a big one for me. Um, very early on when I <laughs> left high school, my mom said, okay, so no college for you. That's a waste of time. Unless you want to be a doctor or a lawyer, you need to get out there and start working. I'm like, but I don't know what I want to do. So she said, I don't care. Just get any job, get to working. You work there for about the next 60 years. Then you get to have fun in your own time. I'm like, huh? I don't want to do that. But that's pretty much the recipe that I got. And I'm sure a lot of people in our age group got too, that, you know, just get to working or get some sort of degree and get, get to be useful. Well, often when you just graduate from high school, not everyone's blessed enough blessed often enough to know what is my great gifts? What do I want to do in the world? You know, what do I have to offer? You don't know yet. Sometimes what's, what's great about college is getting to try out different disciplines and see where are my passions? What am I good at? And also I might add maybe, maybe doing some trade or um, apprenticeship so that you get to try different things and see where your, your gifts and talents lead you. Um, so I think that stops people a lot looking for the approval of others. In my case, my mom said, go to college. I started in a, in a copy center years later, magically ended up by accident in an accounting um, department and never left. Um, but where my gift is today, my greatest gift is helping people get their message out. And I wouldn't have found that out had I not expanded, started my consulting company and magically said, hey, I got to promote my consulting um, firm and, and did a podcast and then realized that that was a great gift and passion I have. Now, I'm 56 years old. I'm much older than you are. So <laughs> I, but I've been through a lot. You know, I was an, I was a paratrooper, blah, 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 all this stuff. Uh, punk, punk, I'm still, a, I'm 56 year old, six years old. I'm still a punk rock. I used to have a, I used to awesome. have a mohawk up to here. Now there's no mohawk. <laughs> I'm sitting up top, but, uh, but I still consider myself a punk. And one of the things that I did, I was going through this phase, was I saw that, that you know, people pleasing and people wanting approval. That's a major thing, as you just talked about. I went the extreme opposite. I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to seek people's disapproval. <laughs> which wow. was it was very weird all right and uh a lot of people thought i was a real jerk off <laughs> uh, uh but it, and, and i i found that that's not the way to go about things however it also i also experienced being totally free free of needing a needing a wanting approval which was mm. a liberation but i just I went too far the other direction. I need, and even keel is the way to go. Mm -hmm. Instead of, I'm not suggesting this. I'm not condoning this. I'm just telling my experience. Uh -huh. So yeah. you know, the way to be is not needing approval nor <laughs> wanting disapproval. Somewhere yeah. in the middle is the is the area, the sweet spot, the even keel. But the but I but I, I saw the difference in mm -hmm. my experience about when I you know with this extreme position, mm -hmm. and and the quote unquote the normal position which is wanting approval right yeah. and people want it from especially from peers peer pressure mm. or people that they respect or in authority then they really want their approval and th that's normal but it can be so circumscribing it can be so robbing of mm. yourself you know and expressing yourself honestly which is really the, the great gift yeah. you know i i found that the really that's the great challenge is being expressing yourself honestly yeah. You know, what's interesting. You mentioning that me being to the extreme of wanting approval of others and you going, I'm going to make sure you don't approve. Right. What What's interesting is that I find myself, I don't know about if it happened for you, but I found when I did step into my authentic self and started to just live my gifts, my talents and stop worrying about being on the approval of others. I found that of course I got disapproval of others and it bothered me and working through that. And so sometimes I think, you know, you will, when you start to just move out and, and go live your best life, I think the people who had been with you in the past might not be so approving and might, you might have to work through some of that disapproval. You, yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you, everyone is on, I found everyone is on their own journey, their own adventure. And mm -hmm. some people, with people, your family, people, your friends mm -hmm. that you have now might get it and probably most won't. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you want their approval, like we were just talking about, you're not going to, you're not going to be on your journey. You're going to be on some diluted version of it, <laughs> you know, where you're, where you're, you're, you're not letting go of things or you're, or you're people pleasing. And you, and then, then that, then you'll get resentment. <laughs> yeah. Resentment comes <laughs> mm -hmm. right. And then, and then anger 
resentment towards them and then anger at yourself because you didn't do what you wanted to do and you have all these regrets. Mm -hmm. So face your fears, people, right? That's yes. where it's at. Listen to Christina. She knows what she's talking about. Get her book. Check <laughs> it out. <laughs> she knows what she's talking about, man. And I'm, I'm all, you know, you know, courage is one of my highest values, you know, mm -hmm. and you've got, you know, you, that doesn't, you've got to temper that with, with consideration because that doesn't you know if you if you're just courageous and just always you know being courageous and not considering the effects of your actions or your words then you're just a jerk right <laughs> a courageous jerk you don't want to you don't want to be a courageous jerk be a even though you know everyone's got something to say right <laughs> so yeah. you know if you know you're living up to high values including consideration right mm -hmm. including regard for others and, and we, we courage, you know, governing your own behavior, then who can, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, approve, you know, people calling you a yeah. jerk. You'll be fine with it. Yeah. And you know what, Tony, uh, my uncle, uh, my great uncle, actually, um, when I started flying lessons, and this was me just testing myself because I want to get past that fear because I love to travel. It wasn't like, oh, I love airplanes. But I found out something very interesting. My uncle at the time was dying of cancer. And he was in the bed and he was saying to me one day, I am so envious of you. I always wanted to take flying lessons. And now he's about 70 something. And he said, I never got to do it. And he didn't have a family. He actually chose not to get married. He didn't have children. He had the opportunity. He had money. He actually left quite a bit of money. He had the opportunity, but he never took it. And he said, I, I now regret that. And, and I, I always think back to that moment. Do you want to be like my great uncle sitting in your deathbed going, oh, what if, if I had even tried it? I, I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't have not liked it, but you don't know because you never tried it. Christina, when you were uh, taking uh, flying lessons, did it, was there ever a time where you, when you almost crashed the plane? <laughs> no, no, no. There was a time though, very early on, maybe a uh, fifth lesson in where I was landing and my teacher was trying to give me as much, um, leeway to do as much on by myself without his input right, right. um but as we were landing see i'm quite new to it and i was using the wrong correction on the rudders mm -hmm. and he kept saying you know right rudder right rudder and i used the wrong rudder and and then i got i got into freeze mode when when i was like getting off target and i was about right. to land over on the uh side of the grass right. and so then he's like uh, give you know there's a thing when you're in the cockpit the um teacher will say my controls are your controls when you're flying he wants you to fly he'll say to you your controls you right. take the controls you say my controls well at that point because he saw i was getting off and about what to land you, in the what were you flying a 727 no, I wish. No, no, it was a Cessna. But uh, he, right. he said to me at that point, because he saw me leaning off and about to land into the grass on the side, he's like, my control. My and I, and yeah. I just went yeah. and I just like froze. My, my leg was stuffed in the law, you know, just pressing really hard on, on the rudder. And I just went refused to. But he had to stomp really hard on the opposite rudder to get it to, you know, because you, you, had, you had locked your leg down on the rudder. Yes, <laughs> I, I got into that, you know, that deer in the headlight thing. Right. So I was just like. And he's that, like, yeah. and he said, he said, next time I'm going to punch you. If you know that. <laughs> but that's the, that's the, you know, that's like par for the course learning is something that's really, you know, really takes a lot of courage, you know? So you did fine, but you know, I was being facetious about crashing before, but you know, even like in a terrible, you know, worst case scenario, say like someone wants to, is afraid of flying and goes mm -hmm. really pushes it like you did and doesn't just become a passenger, but, you know, goes to become, you know, get, get flying lessons. Mm -hmm. And say the worst case scenario, they crash the plane. Now, uh, some uh, cynical people will say, ah, you see, she should have, she should have uh, listened to her fear, but you know what? I'm not, I'm not the person like that. I would say kudos to that person. Yeah, that's obviously terrible. And this is obviously an extreme uh, scenario that I'm, you know, hyper, you know, giving this hypothetical example of, but, if, if a person falls, any person falls, well, it, in the most extreme, terrible way like this, which is fatal, or in some very minor, normal, natural way, you know, mm -hmm. uh, happenstance way, I, I applaud them. I applaud them. If you're a person, you, you're doing the, the hard thing, you're standing up uh, for yourself, you're being courageous, I applaud you. you. You've got my cheers. I love it, you know. And I'm glad you didn't crash that plane, Christina. 
<laughs> Me too. And the teacher really appreciated it too, because he'd hate to go down. No, but I, I don't think we would have crashed as far as like burned and died or something, but we <laughs> might've messed up the, the wing tips and you definitely don't want to mess up that very expensive airplane. And, uh, not be invited back to fly there anymore. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm only teasing you, but uh, very good, of course. Great. Let's hear. Let's take a moment to hear from our sponsor, and we'll be right back with Christina Rivera. This episode of Self Help Coaching is brought to you by Proficio. The pandemic has painfully shown how we must have money put away, not just for a rainy day, but for a whole bunch of them. You must accrue wealth to really be okay. Visit www proficio.io. That's P-E-R-F-I-C-I-O dot I-O, where you can truly learn financial principles like never before so that you can have the future you really want and need. You are listening to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast with me, your host, Tony Petroza. We're here with Christina Rivera. We're talking about her book, Having It Made, A Journey of Rediscovery and Purpose. We're talking about fear. And before I get asked her the next, next question about fear, uh, I want to ask her first about the mm -hmm. over 1,000 people she's interviewed. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot of people. How, what's, yeah. how is that like? You know, it's awesome. And it's, it's, and let me tell you, the whole podcasting thing was what I felt like an accident. It was one day a friend of mine who had just started a business like mine, a consulting business, she said, I'm going to be a radio star tonight. I'm going to be at a podcast. I'm like, what the heck is a podcast? So I tuned in on Blog Talk Radio and I heard her being interviewed. And in the midst of hearing her being interviewed, inside of me, my, you know, you just this deep knowing was saying, you need to do that. I just, and I was like, do what? Interview people? That sounds crazy. So basically, I started out talking to my mentor and she said, use it as a means to build your consulting business and, and get to know people and, and build your credibility. But in the midst of doing it, I found I, a true love for it. And now I could do it all day long and not get paid, which often I don't because I don't always get sponsors. But I've been doing it now 10 years. And within the first six months, we had gotten up to 45,000 listeners without even really trying. Wow. And it, it was just like, this is where I realized, boom, connecting with others, helping them share their message is my great gift. And uh, it just kind of felt happenstance in as far as that was my gift um, by accident. So now the, the radio show you do now, which is Savvy Business Life and Scripted, yes. th that's that's not a podcast, but a radio show. Is that correct? It was on radio for four years. We are on AMF FM transistor radio okay. for four years. Now we are completely just a podcast. We're on a number of different platforms from iTunes, iHeart, but we were on AM FM mostly okay. in Florida, Tampa. Very cool. Now yeah. I know it's all about business, but you also go mm -hmm. into personal development into in that, or is it just, Yeah, we started a new series, uh, beginning of this year called, um, Un unleash your story. And basically that was another savvy series. We've actually just um, officially became an LLC. So now we're savvy broadcasting and we have savvy business life unscripted. We have the new series um, unleash your story, which is the motivational talk or having people on share their stories are motivational and inspiring. And the most newest series we have is forbidden speech, the raw truth. And that one goes into everything that makes people uncomfortable. This is the year to get uncomfortable folks. We're going to grow. And that one touches from sex, God, rock and roll, you name it. <laughs> I, well, I must've been really been talking your language when I was talking about the discomfort zone. Cause yep. they, you know, <laughs> fantastic. I love it. That, you know, that's, you know, I'm also, I happen to be a, a recovered drug addict. I've been clean wow. sober 20 years. And, awesome. you know, and, and I tell people when they ask me about it, I go, this really, there's not really much of a difference between recovery from addiction or, and, and, uh, and, re and achieving goals. And, you know, is that the past is over. Okay. If you want to look, look to the past for fond memories and lessons, that's what you look to the past for. Stay away from looking to the past for anything else. The future is always out of touch and always will be. There's not, the future is always never here right right it's never here it's never yeah. the future it's always now mm -hmm. so only, the only time you can do anything which is which is to have a, you know have your 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 power to have power or mm -hmm. to tap into a higher power 
is in the now, in the present. Mm -hmm. The only time you can do anything for your goals is now. You can't do it any other time, but now. And now is where it's at. <laughs> so yeah. that is where your power is to do mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. It is. It's true. And I, I had done a podcast. There was a, a eight month stint um, during these past 10 years where I didn't do my traditional normal interview style. What I did is just uh, put out a podcast a week talking about my experiences. My husband was going through a lot of health issues. I was going through a few myself and I was just putting out a tip of the week, the savvy tip of the week. And one of them was don't put off today, which you don't put off for tomorrow, which you could do today. Cause you're not promised tomorrow. You might like my uncle, you know, he died of cancer, but you might step off the curve and just get hit by a car. You might get hit by lightning. You just might not wake up. One of my um, friends, sister went to bed, didn't realize she had walking pneumonia, did not wake up 47 years old. So you never know when your last Absolutely. day is. So, you know, just do it today. Don't wait. You might not have tomorrow. Absolutely. The funny thing is, you know, I mentioned some of my checkered past. I, I've had two sisters die. One was killed by a drunk driver at 28. Oh. The other one kind of dropped dead. You know, mm. uh, she, you know, she had a, a tumor that no one knew about. She was dead an hour. Mm. And they were young. They were in their late 20s. And they were beautiful young women. I was this crazy black sheep, extreme guy. Everyone was put, taking bets on that I would be dead soon, including myself. Mm -hmm. And here I am many years later. I'm 56. These poor women have died long ago. You mm -hmm. would have never thought it would have been that way. So you don't know what's going to happen in the future. You don't. The best thing to do is to Take, it by, take the bull by the horns now in the present and do whatever you're going to do because the future is unwritten. You, you, could, be, you could drop dead. You can hit by a drunk driver. You, don't, you could crash a plane. Yeah. <laughs> or have a plane crash on you. You don't know. But yeah. if, you, if you decide what you want to do, you can have an influence on it and you can mm -hmm. better shape the outcome by what you do today. What you do today better shapes tomorrow. Yeah, right? absolutely. And, yeah. I love it. I mean, I really love what you're about. You love what you're about. You're talking about not letting uh, fear take over your heart and your mm -hmm. mind. So it, do you have any tips to help keep that fear at bay or is yeah. it? Yeah. 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 I, I offer a, a, hu a huge amount of them in my book, but one of the things I found that was really helpful for me is like I said, right at the start of our conversation is before you can make any changes to your life, you got to first begin to notice what's not working. Uh, so the first thing, uh, the first step I took was, okay, what's not working in my life. Absolutely. And right now I'm really, truly having bad health at the time, uh, 2008, uh, my health is bad. I'm un in an unhappy job, not a nice boss. Okay. Those are something, where would I like to be? Okay. Here are some of my goals or where I'd like to be. Now that can always change. You don't have to say, you know, really like, um, stagnant, not stagnant. You, um, like it. it how do you call it when you don't move on something you, unmovable, you know, it doesn't have to stay that way, but start with where do I want to be? Where am I now? And then I just start to take steps for it. And one of the first things I did to get to become aware of where I'm at and what I didn't like, or where I want to be was the journaling. And it was perfect for me. It was perfect for me to analyze and see from kind of outside perspective, where am I? What am I not happy with was writing it out every day, Absolutely. just journaling. Mm -hmm. I'm studying stoicism right now, the writings of Marcus mm -hmm. Aurelius and meditation. So, you know, I'm really, I also, I get into, I do personal development of contemporary authors, but now I'm into this ancient philosophy and it's, it's all about personal development. And he espouses Aurelius awareness. He says, this is a critical thing. And it's a funny thing, you know, I was just telling, I have mm -hmm. a protege. I was te teaching my, telling my protege, protege just yesterday that, you know, when I, when I was, I was, I'm a trained actor. And when I, my, my acting mentor who introduced, who also happened to introduce NLP, Neuro Linguistic Program to me, which is what I'm a pr practitioner of, but he introduced NLP and you know, this whole, this whole other world that I didn't know existed, you know, and, and he really knew what he was talking about. He, and this is the guy behind Dustin Hoffman, Gene Hackman, big, huge stars. This guy knew what he was talking about. And he blew me away with what he was saying, not just because you know, of his, his other students, his famous students were. And his other his other con teaching contemporary was Mike Nichols. Do you remember the director, Mike Nichols? He died. Mm -hmm. he, he, gra he directed The Graduate, which is a movie ah. that made me want to be an actor. Just, ah. so, you know, and, it was, and then I became a student. That was awesome. So I was learning all this great stuff from them. NLP, mm -hmm. Gestalt therapy, Ericksonian hypnosis, and this whole other world. 
But what I, I, I but I'm here to tell you that what I learned most from both of them, especially George, was awareness, the necessity of awareness, both within and without. What's going on within me, but what's going on out here too? You know, yeah, and both yeah, are, and then and, and then then I got that, and then I realized how aware, I, unaware I was. I was so completely unaware. Yeah, you just mentioned something very important. Yeah, get, getting uh, aware of what your thoughts, words, what are you feeling inside, all of that. Feelings, also another thing I wasn't paying attention to. You get into a rat race of world, you're not paying attention to your feelings inside. Yeah. But you just said something really, really key. And that was, how are you being experienced from those around you? And uh, because of my constant kind of fear-based, you know, shoulders in, people saw me a certain way that I didn't realize. I thought people saw me as a strong woman and they didn't. And it wasn't until I started journaling and I actually started to also ask friends, how do you see me? What do you see me doing? How do you see me in real? They started to give me a picture I did not expect. So that was really interesting. You mentioned it, not only seeing what, you know, getting your own idea, but how are, how is the public seeing you? Feedback is a critical thing. And, and, and the, great thing about feedback or advice is you know mm -hmm. you don't have to take it but mm -hmm. become aware of it and then think about it objectively think about it not personally because that's mm -hmm. when you can really get get the, so much benefit from yeah, yeah and, and and you more often than not we people see us not like we the way we see ourselves <laughs> yeah you know by the way one thing i wanted to touch on christina you talked about being in the moment I, I, you know and we, we you and i were talking about this just a few minutes ago this this interview right now it, uh, we're here in it's seven thirty here in New York PM. This is the latest interview I've done, and I love it. You want to know why? Because I'm doing what I want to do that's congruent with my both my life purpose. That's why it's a joy. But my my business, my goals, I love doing this. So I was I'm very happy to have this interview late in the evening because I love this stuff. I love what I'm doing. You know, when you love what you're doing, you can you can make these sacrifices very mm -hmm. willingly, very happily, which is what I'm doing. And it's mm -hmm. been a real pleasure for me. I thank you very much, Christina. Oh, I thank you too, Tony. And it's so true. You're absolutely right. When you do something you love, what does it say? The, the, the term, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life because right. you'll be playing, but you'll be putting great effort in. And that's the key. People are like, how do I get rid of the effort? You'll not want to get rid of the effort if you're doing what you should be doing, if you're doing what you're meant to be doing here. I, I work day and night in my business because I want to, I love it. I'm willing to take, to take the risk and to put the effort in because I believe in what I'm doing and I believe in the outcome as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, and the same goes for me. And when I'm, when I'm doing this, when I'm doing podcasting or meeting other individuals or business owners or able to help them with their books, like you were mentioning, you know, they have a real hard time with their finances and I'm able to help a find find a solution and it looks awesome six months prior uh, six months later it's a great sense of um accomplishment that i can be you know be there to help them that's a wonderful yeah. thing let's take a moment to hear from our sponsor and we'll be right back with christina rivera this episode of self-help coaching is brought to you by perficio what if you could get the results of being coached without a human coach what if a computer could coach you Visit www.perficio.io. That's P E R F I C I O.io, where you can get coached without scrutiny, judgment, or pressure. You're all listening to the Self Help Coaching Podcast with me, your host, Tony Petroza, and Christina Rivera. We're talking about her book, we're talking about fear, we're talking about a number of things. Let me ask you, Christina, what are some of the other potential assets? of learning something new? Ah, well, you know what I found from learning something new and I, I now love learning new things. And one of my new favorite things to do is I pick up a book on a new subject and learn about it because it expands your mind to see angles and perspectives of life that you would have never thought about. And it can essentially help you in all other areas of your life. If you know, read a book on, you know, I don't know. Um, I know you read uh, books about um, the making of our country and the American Revolution. You're like, okay, it. you start to see they thought totally different about it. You know, I was just talking to someone, one of my um, guests recently, and uh, she was saying, you know, 
feminism feminism has changed so much because back in the 1700s people seemed to think women were rather weak but they weren't they had to hold down the the fort while men went, went out there and fought for the country and building this nation and that was no easy feat taking care of the kids taking care of the homestead sometimes being out in the wilderness having to you know ward off a bear coming there but you know it was not easy being a woman it was really tough and taking care of the household and the kids so today they think oh women are strong they get to go to jobs and yes you can be a strong woman today but the women back in the 1700s or 1500 even further back were not weak it was just different strength they just had to use their strength differently because they didn't go out to a corporate job but they were strong absolutely i, I think that both men and women had to be stronger back then life mm. was so much more tougher demanding yeah. uncomfortable we have all yeah. these these creature comforts Comfort. today all these leisures things made easy for mm. us it is it is they you had to be much stronger you had to be i think yeah. that we, we have things so easy today that we invent so many frivolous <laughs> and unnecessary problems yeah it's true. We make things harder. We don't realize until you start reading about the experience. I read letters back to George Washington, the president had written to his wife and you realize, gee, it wasn't easy. You had to wait for the mail to get there. And he's explaining his experiences. She's on her terms dealing with her struggles. And, and then you realize you just send an email two seconds later, someone gets your message. Even that you don't realize the gifts you have in today's uh, mo modern world of how a, a wash machine vacuums. Grocery stores, <laughs> news too. I'm business yeah. news, tech news, yeah. psychology news. All this news. What we're doing here right now, connecting and meeting each other across the line. We would have not been able to do this. Right, years and we've connect, we've connected now, right? And we're we're, yeah. we're recording this. It's not live, but it's going to be it's going to be edited. We you know have, have commercials put on that, and then it'll be out in the world for quote, near infinity mm -hmm. <laughs> for anyone. <laughs> That you know, the, because of our SEO, we'll be yeah. able to find us, right? We'll, you know, when we, they were interested in our in our message and, and stuff related to us, yeah. be able to find us, and they go, "Oh wow, this is great stuff. This is useful. I can use this." And mm -hmm. then, man, what what a great world! And I know, mm -hmm. I and I love that. I, I, we're standing on the world. You know, I'm, we're standing on the shoulders of giants, as they say, mm -hmm. but we're living in a world created by those who came before us. Yeah. Who, who, and it's everything is built upon each other. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm interested in doing, and I could, and I, not, now that I've spoken to you, I know that you're interested in the same thing, is about building mm -hmm. great stuff for you and, and, and others so that mm -hmm. we, can ha we can improve our, mm -hmm. you know, our own situation as well as, as, well as others. And, and mm -hmm. then those who come after us, they can build on that. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it starts with the continually learning. I think one of the most dangerous things is saying, you know, it all, oh. you know, to, to always say there's, there's one more thing I can learn. And I was, I intrigued one guy cause you know, I always loved um, physics and, and uh, Albert Einstein and stuff like that. But I couldn't understand that mathematics when I was in school. No. So I decided in, I think my mid thirties, I was going to hire a mathematician just to sit down with me and teach me some higher math, just because I want to get into that world and understand a little, I'm probably, you know, I know I'm never going to be a master in math, uh -huh. but understanding a little bit of that world just gives you that much more experience. You can add to other parts and cross correlate it into other parts of your life. Well, so you really are into personal development when you oh, challenge yeah. your own in, you know deficiency of math uh, i'm like that too i'm math, math you know i look at numbers i start crying uh you know <laughs> and you challenge yourself you got it you uh, in, your, in your third you know mid-age and you're like i'm gonna get a tutor that is you are a real personal developer that's fantastic there's so much about you that is great mm -hmm. and so t talking about you know pushing yourself in, in like that you know, that's about about your mind and skills but now we can get into the other part about health how was your hectic lifestyle playing a role with your health issues? And how yeah. did you reverse this trend? Yeah, well, let's go back to 2008. I'm sitting here. This is when I begin to realize through this conversation with a friend that I'm living a life in complete fear and anxiousness and nervousness. Everything's nervous, fearful, and I'm living a very small life. I, I'm not happy in my job, but I come to do work and I go home late. Uh, I had this idea that if I reach some VP position, then finally I can settle down, be happy. And I just thought, do I want that? 
Um, so what was interesting is realizing uh, first, what did I really, really desire? What was I, um, what was going to make me happy in the long run? And, um, and then also realizing what am I not doing good for my health? At, when I was in that really negative space, I found that I'm working 12 hours trying to please others, as I mentioned, was an issue for me. And I'm not really eating well. I never paid attention. You take it for granted. I think mm. you might realize when you're young, you can pretty much pack right. away whatever you want. You don't have to go to the gym all the time, but you look pretty okay. Maybe not in good health, but you look skinny. Well, when you start reaching your 30s and mid 30s to 40s, it begins to catch up and other health issues catch up. And I heard from a number of my friends, autoimmune diseases. Oh, I have high cholesterol blah, blah, blah. And you begin to realize you can't take your health for granted anymore. You got to start doing something about it. So, um, at that point in time, I started to, you know, pay attention again. What am I eating? What am I putting in my body? What can I start to do just to move a little bit? I had severe back pain all the time. And for me, one of the things that was good to start with is walking because it was so such a simple way to get out there, not super difficult, but a good way to get started and get that moving going. Totally. Um, yeah. So that was where I started. I just got together with some coworkers, started going for walks and bit by bit, it's, it's been a process this year. I actually lost 40 pounds because I took it to a whole new level where I hired a personal trainer for the first time. Um, really looked at my nutrition more deeply with a nutritionist, not just like what, what could I do with or without, um, you got just, really serious. I got super serious. <laughs> And it was through that whole fear base of staying at home or in lockdown in Brooklyn. I was still in Brooklyn at the time. And I said, what can I do to make my life better? What's the next step, next level? And that's the one thing I want the listeners to get is that this isn't like, oh, I got it. I'm now done a year later. It's an ongoing life process. Even if you start to do better with my health, as I did back in 2008, there's always the next level you can move to get better at your health at your, um, at your passion, at your job, at whatever, you can always grow just that much more. Yeah. And, and, and then part and parcel with that is education. Mm -hmm. We have to educate ourselves and learn new things or better things, more things mm -hmm. that, that hopefully and should be useful, mm -hmm. useful information. That's mm -hmm. the main thing. I mean, yeah, we all, uh, one of the problems that we have is that we, we major in minor things, you know, we get caught up in stuff with a low return mm. and we need to have balance. Well, we need entertainment, we need recreation, we need relaxation. Yes, yes. But we also need to improve our education. We should all, always be self-educating, yeah. right? I, that, I'm a huge proponent of that. I mean, I'm, I mean mm. uh, I'll read your book. You know, I, will, I wanna know more about personal mm. development, about business, about things that I need to learn that are, help, that are, that are going to help me pursue my goals and achieve them. I'm always yeah. all about self-educating. Yeah, it's a never-ending process. And that's a good thing. Some people, my mentor now I work with, will say, uh, some people will come to him and say, okay, when do I get to the end where you've taught me my last lesson and then I just get to live the fruits of my labor and no more effort and I just get to have fun. And he's like, uh, go away, don't be an entrepreneur, not for you, because it never ends. The journey never ends to growing yourself, or if you're going to be a business owner, it doesn't end and you don't want it to, you don't want to be here like, oh, it's all over. I can just sit here on the beach somewhere. Why would you even want to do that? Why would you even want to stop when there's always that next level of growth? Christina, you have been a wonderful guest. I really appreciate it. Great to meet you. Great to meet you. And spend, I'm glad, thank you very much for spending time with us and giving your message to the audience. Do you have a, a final remarks for me and the audience? Yeah, absolutely. Don't wait. Go out there and start something today. If you don't know what you have a passion in, as was the case with me in 2008, um, just start with journaling and start to rediscover what is something you loved as a kid that maybe you just forgot and left, lost touch with. And as you begin to journal or self-reflect, those things will start to come to the surface. Ask questions to people around you. They could also give you feedback. You know, one thing I experience in journaling because I, I some people criticize that you know they say what are you doing i'm journaling you know and there's that there's that thing that we've mm -hmm. we've talked this is we talked about this several times in our conversation mm -hmm. is that I, I i said to i said to them i said you know why i journal because important people make a journal about themselves all right that's why i do it so mm -hmm. i regarded myself as as important and a partner and that's why i should do that and when you tell other person like that 
of something like that. They're like, how dare he regard himself as important? It's like a, yeah. it's like, well, how dare you think that? You know, it's like a revolution mm -hmm. to their ears. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm putting it out in the universe that I'm important, not in some self-aggrandizing mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm journalizing because I'm important. Not, that's mm -hmm. not vanity. Mm -hmm. journaling, journaling is a damn good thing to do. Uh, and, yeah. it, and to feel good about it is even better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know, here's something you mentioned that's very important, Tony. People will say, well, look at him promoting himself or how dare he promote himself. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, if you have a true gift and talent and you are, you know, saying, oh, yeah, I wrote this book or I, I did this big sale. And we did 50 million last year. There's nothing wrong with promoting yourself. Uh, what do you think PR agents do? They, <laughs> they PR their, they do the pro PR for their clients. Um, it's, there's a difference between being self gratulatory where you're all like yes. braggadocious and, right. and it's over the top, right. or you're just saying, Hey, here's my accomplishments. Yeah. You know, there's a, you know, it doesn't have to be arrogant and no one else is going to do it if you don't do it. So, you know, toot your Absolutely. own horn sometimes. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I love, uh, you know, like I mentioned, I'm a practitioner of neuro linguistic programming. And one of the mm -hmm. co-founders, John Grinder said back in the seventies, you mm -hmm. know, when someone said they, they challenged him about something he was doing, uh, or he would challenge someone, I don't recall the certain scenario, mm. but he, you know, in terms of competency or, or promotion, you know, mm. he, he said, you're thoroughly incompetent, but you're the only one who can do it. <laughs> so he's being paradoxical. Yeah, and yeah. I mean that. So, so if you, you think that you, your endeavors, your tasks are too big for you or too, mm. too, uh, you know, grandiose, maybe you can't do it, but you're mm. the only one who can. So yeah. go for it. Go for it Absolutely. and you'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. You'll figure it out. Then you'll learn along the way. Vistas will open. Bridges will appear. If you keep going for it, things are going to change. You're going to find that the experience wasn't what you thought it would be. It's not the premise. Go for it because it's a whole other thing when you when you get out there. Yeah. I it love is. it. Very yeah. good. <laughs> uh, I understand, Christina, you have a free gift for our audience. What is oh. it? You betcha. I have a chapter of my book. It's the fourth chapter of my book, and I'd like to offer it as a gift for everyone to help you get on that first step to kicking your fears in the butt. And you can just go to SavvyBroadcasting.com uh, if you type in dash new dash page, or you could just go to our website. You go to the homepage and boom, you'll see books and bonus resources. And we've got a bunch of resources on there, including the fourth chapter of my book, which uh, go out there. It's called removing the veil of fear. And that's where you want to start. Get start to remove that veil of fear and really get clear on what's stopping you. Great. So they can go to SavvyBroadcasting.com. Mm -hmm. And you also have social media, which all, all your links will be listed on your on your page at the, yes. our website, your LinkedIn, your Twitter, your Pinterest, uh, so they can go to our page to find you on social media, unless you want to also announce what they are, Christina, you're welcome. No, that's fine. That. Yeah. You, they can just go to one place. That way they have to go all the other places, okay, but it's great. pretty easy. You look for savvy broadcasting. You'll find us in a sorted amount of places. Christina, you've been a fantastic guest. You, you've been so conversational, you know, and colloquial and, you know, talking about your experiences and what you, the, the great value that you offer people, not just in challenging their fears, but utilizing their skills, their inherent skills in, in making a business for themselves or, or, or going for goals, whether they be ones that are seemingly, you know, ordinary as flying mm -hmm. or, or, or interviewing a thousand people. I mean, it's, it's fantastic, mm -hmm. really great stuff. I really appreciate you and what you, what you're doing, what you, and your time here. Uh, mm -hmm. I definitely a lot of value for my audience. I appreciate that. God bless you. God and I want everyone to remember um, that everyone is responsible for themselves and we could all use a little help. And with Absolutely. that, <laughs> thank you very much, Christina. Thank you, audience. Thank you for watching or listening. And we'll see you next time. You want to say goodbye? Oh, yes, yes. I, I, Christina, say goodbye. You get the last goodbye. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in to the Self Help Coaching Podcast, where insights, attitudes, and methods for success get illuminated. Learn what leaders and change workers have done and are doing now to create magnificent futures. Remember to visit our website at self-helpcoaching.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Self-Help Coaching Podcast.